recording. Okay, well, again, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to, to, first of all, I want to thank you for having me today and uh, to present uh, about the radiology community practice with some tips on career advancement. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Rola Shaheen, and I am the chief and medical director for uh, uh, Peterborough Regional Health Center Radiology Department. And I need to move forward with the objectives of the talk. Uh, I'm going to provide an overview of my journey in global health and community practice, highlight challenges and opportunities of community practice, describe workflow in the diagnostic imaging department at PRHC, just as an example of one of the community practices in a hospital setting, share some insights of some of my esteemed community radiologists in Ontario, just to give you an idea how things are, not just through my lens, through other people's lens with the different experiences and different stages in their career. And then provide tips on career advancement. After that, definitely we're gonna have some uh, discussion on, and questions. I'll be more than happy to, to answer your questions or even connect you with those radiologists that you're interested to be in touch with. So the agenda, we're gonna start with the background uh, and some description of the radiology practice at PRHC. I'll describe some pros and cons uh, for the community practice. And what do radiologists say about their community practice? And as I said, some tips for career advancement. Just to give you some um, idea about my background so that you can understand where I'm coming from in terms of my views and ideas and career. Uh, I grew up in Kuwait. Uh, I have a Palestinian background. I got into faculty of medicine in 1989. And uh, in Kuwait, you get into medical school right away after high school. You don't have to do an undergrad, just like the North American system. However, after one year of medical school, Saddam invaded Kuwait. And uh, as a Palestinian, I wasn't able at the time to go back to, to my med school. So I had to transfer to Jordan. And uh, I did uh, six years of medical school there uh, and graduated in 1996. I moved with my husband, who happened to be a Canadian, to we migrated to Canada in uh, 1997. I worked as a research assistant at the Hospital for Sick Kids, and I was able to get into the Ontario IMG program. And those of you who are probably from the IMG program would know how many exams you have to take. Uh, I heard it's more complex now, but uh, it was quite a, a journey. It was very enjoyable at that time. In 2001, I started uh, my radiology residency program at the University of Toronto, and then I finished in 2007. And doing the math, you can tell that I finished in six years, not five, because I took a year off of maternity leave, which was really one of the best decisions that I've made, and I highly recommend it for both men and women. Uh, I went to Boston. I did my... Uh, Women's Imaging Fellowship at Beth Israel. Uh, it's affiliated with Harvard Medical School. I stayed on faculty there and I'm gonna get to that part because I was recruited to work in a community hospital that was uh, part of an acquisition from an academic center. So it was again, another interesting uh, milestone in my life. In 2012, I, uh, I was also headhunted to go to Abu Dhabi in UAE to work for Saha, which is the main healthcare provider there for governmental hospitals, where I spearheaded the, uh, the development of standardized practice for breast imaging. Then we decided to come back home to Canada in 2015, and uh, I was recruited to be the um, chief of radiology, which actually really matched our family plans because my son was already boarding at Lakefield College, so it really worked well. And I'm still at PRHC. I wear some variable hats uh, as the chief and medical director of PRHC. I also get involved in the region and uh, in the province as especially in my area of specialty as a breast imager. I'm the regional breast uh, imaging lead for both the uh, Central East and the Mississauga Halton Central West regions. I also worked as the previous QMP lead quality management partnership for mammography 
a program that has been stopped two years ago, but actually a lot of the work that has been done has been integrated into the Ontario Health uh, uh, Breast Screening Program, like the OBSP. I'm also the breast imaging lead, sorry, the cancer imaging lead for our region, uh, the Central East region. And lastly, um, I just finished my executive, global executive MBA in healthcare and life science from Rotman uh, Business School, after which I decided to found my own consulting firm for the Women's Imaging and Leadership Lab, uh, because I do have passion for teaching and uh, conducting some workshops uh, to that effect. Uh, I, conduct, uh, I conducted the last one in Dubai in February and was a great success. And I'm also proud adjunct assistant professor of radiology at Queen's University. So a little bit about my practice in, uh, at Peterborough Regional Health Center. Um, just to give you an idea, the hospital is a fully regional health center with an annual operating budget, more than 320 million and more than 480, 480 inpatient beds. So it, it's really big, it's really busy uh, and it's getting busier with COVID as you can tell across the board. We serve Peterborough city and county and a referral population of 300,000 people in four counties and regional population of 600,000 in the Central East region. So like Kingston General and Lake Ridge Health and Scarborough Health Network, PRHC is now a fully integrated hub of care. What does that mean? Like there are three areas um, that would make you a hub for care. The regional center of excellence, especially for um, uh, cardiology, oncology, which is cancer care, and um, vascular. As for the regional referral program, we, we, we do get a lot of referral programs as you, uh, like uh, part of the critical care and other areas uh, listed below, as you can see it on the right of the screen. Also, we have some local community programs, which DI is part of them, as well as um, emergency medicine. I also wanted to give you an idea about what sort of rotations and uh, teaching engagement PRHC have. Already there are core rotations for residents, including anesthesia, emergency medicine, gastroenterology, ICU, ortho, and family medicine, actually a full program of two years residency. And we have core rotations for undergrads, such as for ob gyne clerk. We do, elect, we do get residents uh, doing electives with us, psychiatry, palliative care, and we've had Couple, I would say probably two radiology residents so far. The accommodations, um, Queens coordinates the accommodation for those core rotations and they do own a house, uh, an apartment on Park Hill Street. The family medicine uh, Kawartha site residents, they secure their own housing since they have, you know, the placement is a more on a longer term. The Rural Ontario Medical Program assists with the accommodation for those elective, elective rotations if you ever think about considering doing an elective with us. Our radiology department really is like uh, a hidden gem. It, basically, it has a lot of uh, technically all the subspecialties and modalities that you can think of. Uh, maybe the differences between us and the academic center is the fact that we're, we, we're probably not functional 24 hours in certain areas such as MRI. But like we do have <clears throat> 24 hours seven CT running with in-house techs, um, state of the arts uh, just got uh, renewed last year. Uh, we have two brand new MRI scanners. One of them, uh, like we, we, we had the second MRI recently uh, with the capability to do breast MRI biopsies. Uh, I love our breast assessment center. We have uh, tomosynthesis, full digital mammography. We offer contrast enhanced mammography. Obviously we do all sorts of biopsies, stereo and ultrasound guided uh, core biopsies. Ultrasound also is a very busy department. We have, uh, which is functional 24 hour sevens for emergencies. We offer some outpatient cases on the weekend and we do have nuclear medicine. Technically we do everything except for cardiac because it's offered in the community in Peterborough done by the cardiologists. The good news is for those who are considering to join our practice is that we do have a good lifestyle in a way in, in radiology because we decided we're such a busy hospital and a lot of our radiologists are, are full timers. Our call is busy. So we looked at the fact that we would benefit from outsourcing the coverage at night by, from a teleradiology company, which covers us from 10 p.m. until 
8 a.m. We do have interventional radiology. Uh, it's a busy department. We have four radiologists who actually have dedicated pool for call. Uh, we do, they do vascular, non-vascular, and uh, the plan is to, pl to get a neurointerventional in the future because we are a stroke center. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning the fact that the any, any image-guided procedures other than you know, lymph nodes or joint, in joint injections are truly done uh, exclusively by our interventional radiologists. So they really kind of uh, have a niche of doing a lot of procedures, yet they still do call in GenRad with us um, with, with a smaller percentage to keep up their skills. They cover CT, MRI, and other um, diagnostic imaging rotations to keep up their skills. But we try our best to keep them mainly rotating through the interventional uh, rotations. Now, let's talk about pros and cons of uh, being in the community practice. And I, honestly, I, I didn't know if I can divide them into pros and cons. I just thought these are the items that come to mind and depends on the person and the passion and, and the skill set. You can look at this from different angles and you can, what I see as a pro, you can see it as a con and vice versa. So I'm gonna mention them and uh, I'll give you my, my two cents. Also, it's nice to hear from other radiologists about what they think. And, and you can come up with your own list um, today at the end of the lecture and, and you can decide what is a pro and what, uh, what, what are the pros and what are the cons. Case mix, subspecialty and niche. So in community practice, uh, you'll have a great case mix. Actually, I think this is one of the um, added value because you cannot just, being in the community, you cannot just say, oh, this is the, the, the type of disease that should come to this hospital. We see everything. We do have uh, subspecialty in radiology in the sense that we hire people with fellowships with, and with certain areas that uh, they are very um, comfortable with, yet they need to do more uh, general radiology. And a lot of our radiologists develop their niche. Like we have people who are really good in MSK because they've uh, they've done MSK fellowship. We have people who are good in cardiac imaging, despite the fact that probably they didn't do the, the, the fellowship, but they developed with time and experience and, and self-learning the, the, the experience to do the cardiac imaging. And let alone the fact that we do have as well uh, women's imaging uh, uh, fellowship trained radiologists with niche in, uh, in, in breast imaging. In terms of the workflow di dynamics, um, you can... In the community practice, it's kind of, a, there's more flexibility in, in my opinion than the academic because you, you can work remotely, you can work on site. Uh, we have the flexibility of doing teleradiology. Um, I'm not sure how things are now after COVID um, in, in the academic centers and how residents get taught. Uh, I, I, I would expect that the staff need to be on site to review things. Probably you work out a certain workflow between you and your uh, your staff or, or, or the faculty that you would report with. However, I do feel there, there should be some sense of um, being comfortable with delegation to, 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 to work remotely in, a, in an academic uh, setting. But again, um, I, I haven't experienced it, so I don't know. You guys probably know more than me on this. Volumes are really, really high in the community practice. I would say even more higher in the IHFs, which are the um, uh, clinics or independent health facilities. Some people can look at this as a pro or, uh, or, or as a, something negative because you know they don't wanna be too busy, but some would like the high volume because that means more income. Uh, it depends on your objective. On call, it's very busy and you are it. You don't have the resident, you don't have the fellow to help you out. So you're really covering it. However, we figured out a way to make it, as I said, more humane, um, having a good lifestyle uh, in the sense that next day you're, you are able to work. That's why we got the teleradiology coverage. We split the weekend coverage bet uh, between two radiologists. Add to this the fact that I interventional radiology has their own pool. So less calls and less interruptions would fall on the diagnostic radiologist. Teaching environment, of course, you're gonna be missing that in the community setting, unless you are affiliated with the universities. So some of the hospitals in the communities, 
um, are actually uh, affiliated with certain university or residency, radiology residency programs. I would say, for example, North York General, uh, it's mandatory. For us at PRHC, it's optional that when we renew our, uh, our credentials with the hospital, we would say if we are willing to accept uh, a student or uh, a resident to rotate with us or not. But my understanding at some hospitals, it's mandatory in, in the community practice. But you will miss it. Like It's not like um, a, having a resident or, or a fellow every day on, on your side and challenging you and uh, keeping, you, um, you know, keeping you up to date. Financial perspective, the, <laughs> well, basically, I guess it, the money is more in the community practice, uh, but that's also, rel uh, I would say it's all relevant. Depends on what's your FTE, like how much you're, try you, you're, you're going to work, how much time you dedicate to something else. So it, it's variable, but certainly people have found that they make more money when they transfer from academic to um, to, to community practice. Career and job satisfaction, I guess depends also on the person. Um, a lot of people, uh, again, from talking to them, including myself, are very happy with their decision being in the community practice uh, because they've, we've carved it in a way that suits our needs and get to do stuff that we like. Um, but uh, certainly part of me miss being in the academic center, especially when I was in Boston, like. It's so exciting working with residents and medical students and fellows. You learn from them, uh, even, uh, even though that you teach, but like you learn from them as well, uh, especially if you get challenged uh, by, by those uh, uh, student residents. Lifestyle, it can get very busy uh, and it can take you away if, you, if you're, um, you, you may, there is a risk that you get burned out if, if you decide to, if you don't plan your, your, your days and if you're not plan, you don't uh, take breaks. However, the chances and the flexibilities in, the, in, in getting a more um, enjoyable lifestyle in the community practice, I, I would think maybe um, uh, easier, I would say in, in the community practice and mental wellness, like it, it's very important. And this is also very relevant. Um, it's what you want and what you enjoy and uh, I, I, I guess it depends on the support system that you have in the setting that uh, you're going to end up working with. So, so you look at all these aspects and come up with the best recipe and best uh, balance that uh, would suit you in whatever job you choose. And here are some reflections on uh, one of my colleagues, Jeff Descolta, we were uh, classmates in the residency at uh, U of T. Um, and uh, he was the, uh, fellowship director for, uh, for interventional radiology at UFT and at UHN. And then he moved to work in the community practice, I think a few years ago uh, at Brampton, uh, in Brampton. So here, are, and I reached out to him and this is what he shared with me. He said, academic job is extremely interesting and challenging and the reward is being on the forefront of medicine. It's great that you're being surrounded by people who all love and thrive on that but the price paid is the level of commitment that requires to work, which comes at the expense of the personal lives and time. You may get up, uh, sorry, you may get, get caught up in doing academic work for the sake of career advancement, not for the joy of discovery and learning. He goes on and talking about that leap from academic practice is that he treasures the time he spent in academia, but he said, I think the thing that most people don't realize coming out of residency is that there isn't one path better than the other. And I totally agree with Jeff on that one. And it's, I think this is the take home message for you guys. Like, since you are at that kind of uh, fork, um, you know, you, you really don't know where you, some of you probably they know already, but like for those who are still on the fence, there's really no right or wrong. It's all about what fits for your personality, skill set, and career goals. He says, I've been able to contribute to the growth of a world-class vascular intervention program where he works now. And I have developed a strong interest in AI and artificial intelligence, which enabled me to participate in some cross-departmental research and start, uh, start working with startups. And I've, I can see that Jeff is really enjoying his career. I reached out to him during my MBA because we had some AI projects that I needed vascular 
input on and uh, it was great that he had the background on AI. He, 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 it was a great self-learning journey for him and he did fantastic. I came across this paper, which I found very interesting, um, playing well with the others, the, the challenge of academic and community radiology practice integration. And the reason why I found this uh, resonating with what I've had as an experience in Boston, as soon as I finished my fellowship, I got hired to work in that new hospital that they acquired from, um, from the community. So you take the high level mothership uh, practice uh, of academia and you apply it into the community practice, you would think it's a good thing. Obviously it is, but you have to understand the culture there and, and you have to make sure that you don't um, impose things and, and you need to play well, as they said. I guess the, the most important thing that we need to keep in mind is the healthcare di uh, trilemma, which the three factors, quality, access, and cost. And it's very crucial to find the right balance without compromising quality uh, of patient care. Because you would find in, in, in any practice, not just in community practice, good quality or high quality comes at the expense of increased cost and lowering access, meaning lower volumes, higher cost, you would expect that you would have a higher quality. Because if you have high volumes, it's very hard to keep up the quality. If you don't have the best equipment or like the, I wouldn't say the best equipment, I would say like the resources um, that cost money, you will not sometimes be able to uh, perform high quality studies. So there is no right or wrong in this and, and it's very hard to optimize it. Yet you work out as within the management strategy in your department, or even in, in the way you plan your day when you report studies is, is like, uh, and, and the workflow, you plan it in a way to ensure if I, if I would prioritize anything, I would prioritize quality. This will give you the job satisfaction. You will always be safe and you'll always be grateful and looking forward to your job. And it's less burnout. Uh, Naveen actually, Dr. Naveen Parasu, who's the chief of diagnostic imaging uh, at uh, Norfolk General Hospital in Simcoe, he's also a staff radiologist at Hamilton Health Sciences with McMaster University. He's an MSK radiologist, um, and he's also my classmate from the MBA uh, with Rotman. He actually gave me a very good insight on how to work how, how an academic center can, uh, what's, what are the pros of working in a, in a community hospital? He said, getting residents and fellows working along with you at the community hospital, give them a good experience because this is missing from their regular day-to-day -day, uh, training. Arranging monthly teaching sessions for the technologists with interesting imaging cases in different modalities, which probably this, that community practice would, would miss and, and they don't see it all the time. Uh, it's rare because it, they may not be even a tertiary centers and the type of complex cases that end up in academic centers are different than what we have in the community practice. Radiologists doing relevant imaging talk to medical faculties such as breast imaging referrals. You know, in, uh, I think what Naveen is referring to here is the multidisciplinary kind of engagement. Lesser degrees of management hierarchy, ability to communicate with the hospital leadership in an easier, quicker manner, and physicians know one another because usually it's a smaller community. One of the cons that he talked about that it may not be challenging work to stimulate continuing interest for academic rats. That's why they pull out or they try to get out of that rotation or switch out of it. And sometimes those kind of community practices are far away from the main location or the central location of the, of the academic center. And that's a negative kind of thing. Like uh, I think his hospital is an hour away from where their main practice is in Hamilton. How about IHF, which is basically radiology clinic uh, and IHF stands for uh, independent health facility, uh, it, which is a major part of radiology in Ontario. I reached out to Dr. Niraf Patel, who's the chief of radiology and medical director at GNMI. Maybe some of you have heard, have heard about GNMI because they are now one of the uh, big teleradiology companies in Ontario and they have IHFs dealing with uh, body imaging. He said, working in IHFs offers the chance to make significant contribution to patient care by pushing the boundaries that are often limited in a hospital setting due to various factors, including inefficient decision-making, 
technology schedules, lack of urgency. They can provide academic level specialized care in the community with more efficiency than many hospital systems. He goes on and he talks about in the community today, we have the best of both worlds, like sub-specialization, great compensation and improved lifestyle. He noted that many academic radiologists and community hospital radiologists come to IHF work at GNMI for the sub-specialized work that they have, because they either, like maybe they don't have, those radiologists don't have enough variety in their practice. They do not get enough of their specialty that they like, uh, especially I would say if it's neuro or MSK or for improved work-life balance. Um, and, and it's not surprising because I've see, he, he says that many new fellows are now seeing the pros of high level community practice. And in the last two years, they were able to hire seven full-time radiologists straight out of fellowship, which I, I think this is amazing. What other radiologists say about their community practice? This is Dr. Elise Gershatter. She works uh, as a medical director of MRI. She's a staff radiologist at St. Joseph Health Center in Ontario. Elise and I go back to uh, residency time. She also did her MSK fellowship in Boston at the, ID, the IDMC where I, I was a faculty and she was a fellow, so we overlap. She went back and worked uh, as a part-time at St. Joe's and uh, here's what she says. The main advantages of community practice for me are variety and flexibility. And you can still have a subspecialty niche and the job satisfaction that comes with adding value to your department but also the full variety of radiology. And there's the option of tailoring your practice to the elements that are most interesting to you. So it's all about like the fact that you carve your own way. Ryan, Ryan Margo is the chief and medical director of radiology department at North York General Hospital. Also Ryan was uh, in the same year uh, like me and Jeff. However, they were a year ahead of me because like at the end because of my maternity leave. We always kept in touch and uh, the leader, he's talking about the, his leadership opportunity. He said, it's been hard work and challenging, but I have learned a lot and I think I've had accomplishments. And uh, honestly, Ryan has done a great job. He, he's very collaborative. He shares his learning experiences with everybody uh, across the board with the other chiefs in Ontario. I think a common theme is that my career has kept changing and this has been a good thing for me, no regrets. Good for you, Ryan. And on a per personal level, my career as a community radiologist has been very rewarding, both professionally and financially. And he says, it's all about change and being willing to embrace it. Jeff, again, the uh, interventional radiologist, he said, when I moved to the community, I found that I made more money for less time at work, far from limiting my ability to push boundaries and innovate. It gave me the time and freedom to do those things for the love of the game, it gave me more time to participate in a non-clinical project such as the Royal College for both IR and diagnostic radiology. I guess you guys get the, get the point that when you're moving out of academic centers and working in the, in, the academic, in the community setting, it doesn't mean that you stop giving back to your specialties. Actually, you may get more time and you do it for, and, and you do it for fun and you enjoy it. And as he put it really um, in, in a very, um, uh, good way, I would say easy way to describe it is that your career is what you make it. And I love the opportunities that I've had crafted, uh, uh, that I've had to craft an amazing clinical and unofficially academic career in the community radiology. Diana, uh, she's currently working in um, Scarborough. We lost her, actually she was one of uh, our group that she moved for family reasons. And she said she chose the community radiology practice because she enjoyed the broad scope of practice similar to Elise and every day is different and engaging and interesting. She does a lot of procedural work and she always enjoyed it. However, she highlighted an important fact that some of the challenges are the heavy workload, dealing with subspecialty cases as a general radiologist. And, and I share that with her, I agree. So it's very important to have colleagues that you can ask for opinions. Our newest hire, Dr. Christopher Louis is um, staff radiologist with us at PRHC. We were able to attract him to our practice coming from Cleveland Clinic. Uh, and uh, this is what he says. He said, it's being a part of the community practice allows me to read a much larger variety of studies, keep up skills in other subspecialties from residency that I enjoyed and I don't want to lose. 
The case complexity is not as high compared to academics, yet the clinical impact can be more meaningful, particularly in less than urban areas. And as I said, he did his uh, fellowship in uh, Cleveland Clinic Foundation and it was MSK, so we're very happy to have him. It's only been a few months, according to what uh, Chris says, and, uh, but working alongside and sharing difficult cases with like-minded colleagues keeps me, keeps me reading and motivated to learn. And you can tell probably, um, I bullied Chris to get him to write this for me uh, so that uh, I can share it with you to give you the view of a newly hired radiologist. However, I do feel he's enjoying his time and I hope we, uh, we will be able to retain Chris uh, in, in PRHC. And here are some few tips on career advancement um, that uh, through my lens. I do highly recommend that you get involved uh, with your hospital foundation. They're really uh, most helpful in the community practice to get you uh, equipment, uh, expand programs, uh, advocate on your behalf as physicians highlight some great work that you do. It's very important. It's not like in the academic center where you are able to get grants to, to, to do something. I guess they are kind of the, there are foundations obviously, and, and the role of foundation is very important in the academic center, but I think they have more work to do uh, when, uh, when, when they are in the community setting. Cherish the multidisciplinary mindset because better, uh, better together. Like I would say, get involved in uh, as much as possible talking to other clinicians and get involved in those kind of multidisciplinary meeting, whether it's breast, pan pancreas, other, uh, anything related to uh, multidisciplinary kind of meetings. Make sure that you're there, have a say, make radiology. Uh, like you have to be at the table for radiologists to make, to be part of the decision. Be a member in at least one of the hospital uh, or regional or provincial committees. This way you will be informed, uh, get a mentor and become a mentor so that you can build your contextual awareness, making sure to understand your own um, unconscious biases and you treat people uh, with obviously with, with respect, but like sometimes, you know, those unconscious biases are, are there. So the more you are aware about, uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion, the, the, the more you will find you're advancing in your career and get, get to work with people easier. Stay up to date in your niche area and grab the opportunities to attend any career development workshops, which you're currently doing uh, like today. Work hard and play hard. Make sure that you take time off. Beware of burnout. Actually, it's, it's really, really dangerous and um, you have to unblock and, 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 and relax. Embrace the radiology department citizenship. And I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, I talked about the foundation and what they do. So it's basically the role of philanthropy in healthcare um, uh, and, uh, or any hospital environment. They are the catalyst for health equity. They bridge, they are our bridge to partnerships, stakeholders, community leaders, like they introduce you also to the community. They're responsible, they, they facilitate the engagement of physicians and healthcare professionals and uh, it's nice, you, you, you will get also through them a lot of the expression of patient and family gratitude. And here are some of the programs that they did for us in uh, PRHC. This is Dr. Fadi Abdesaid. He's one of our IR radiologists. They highlighted the great work that we've been doing. This is uh, a case study that they've done for the breast assessment center where they were able to get us the money to buy the tomosynthesis machine. I wanted to spend uh, a minute uh, or two on the, what is radiology department citizenship? Uh, we have start, I have started as a chief um, an annual award that is given to the radiologist who gets uh, nominated for this uh, award. And it's basically those radiologists that would show exceptional commitment to leadership in the delivery of patient care through technical and clinical expertise in medical imaging while holding themselves to um, the highest standards in order to create the best working environment. They embrace the following values, which we all should, honesty, integrity, trust, empathy, tolerance, compassion, and equity. And this would make you a good radiology citizen <laughs> in, within the department. And of course, I cannot end any talk uh, that I'm speaking without, at least it's, it's a radiology talk. So I have to post an image. And I thought for the love of the game, I'm gonna post my, one of my favorite modalities, which is mammography. And this is for you to, let me know if you can see the cancer. Anyone? Good. 
Just a guess, anywhere. Which quadrant? Okay, right or left? So there is that tiny asymmetry. You can see it in the upper outer quadrant of the right breast. Actually, it was missed initially, and a year later, this was picked up, just so you know. So in summary, radiology community practice is a great career choice if you craft it to suit your personality, skill set, and passion. Remember to be a good radiology citizen, and above all, a great ambassador for our specialty. And as you walk to your work every day, remind yourself of the great impact radiologists have on patient care. And embrace the fact that it's okay to work behind the scene as a diagnostic radi imaging radiologist. Yet you get to see the true inside image of your patients and occasionally the interesting outcome of our colleagues' work. Thank you very much for your attention. And now I'm happy to take questions. If any. If um, I can ask a question, um, I'm Islam with the uh, I2. Um, just a question about your decision to do MBA um, later in your career. Um, what was like the rationale behind it and like, the advantages of doing it? That's a very good question because actually I'm asking myself this question after the fact. When did I have the time to even to do that? I guess it's something, uh, uh, Arsalan, that I've always had on my mind to do this because. Uh, as soon as I finished my fellowship in Boston, um, the reason why I stayed there and I took a job because my husband did his MBA with Boston University. And uh, I used to study with him and uh, work with him on some of his uh, uh, assignments. And most of them actually were around healthcare for some reason. And I got very interested and I, I was very intrigued about areas such as finance, accounting, um, which are very relevant to our, to our uh, work. As, as you progress in, in your career, you would see that if you don't understand the language at the leadership table about where money is going and why, and, and what's the rationale, the uh, economic, uh, uh, economics, it's, it's very, very important. And then I thought, look, whenever I had the opportunity to do it, uh, I would. Uh, and I don't regret it. It was the, like really a great experience. I picked a wonderful program uh, at Rotman. Uh, you get to work with a lot of uh, people from different healthcare sectors. They become all of a sudden your best friends and, and for life, like you have access to a network. Like for example, to, uh, it, like Naveen, I gave him heads up only last night about my talk. And I said, hey, I have a talk. Can you send me your input? Like, we, we owe it to each other to, to help each other. So I guess it's more to expand my network to answer your question and to kind of satisfy some curiosity about other non-medical specialties that we don't get to learn about it in, in medical school. I highly recommend it, let's put it that way. Great, thank you. You're welcome. I have a question for you guys. Like, did any one of you end up doing an elective in a, any community hospitals in a, within your program? Is it offered as part of your uh, residency program? This is a yes or no question. It is offered, um, but I know for like, for instance, Clay, I think also wants to say something. So I'll make this. Brief, but I know like when Clay and I instead joined, it was during COVID. So it made doing community electives or traveling electives a bit harder. Do you think COVID like stopped this or uh, like made the interest uh, less? I, I think during COVID, like you couldn't really do away electives like anywhere like you know going to another university or a community place so 
like the older residents didn't really do that. And then like Kat said, we're the same year. Um, I think we both actually have plans to do a community elective later um, in the year. But I think like Kat said, it's, you know, an, an option we have that we kind of have to set up on our own, but it's not a requirement. Got it. And which year are you in guys in your PG, like which PGY year are you in? Uh, Kat and I are both year three. Fantastic. And uh, like, do all the residents do fellowships nowadays? Like, are you all planning to do fellowships or some of you end up going directly into uh, practice? What, what's the trend that you guys have been seeing? I think most people end up doing a fellowship, but for instance, one of our recently graduated PGY5s just went directly into community practice in BC. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very good. Any other questions? Do you guys know how to negotiate an offer when you get a job? No. <laughs> Do you know what to ask for? Other than like, yes, I want to work at this hospital or this group. That was kind of one of the questions I was thinking of. Like, yeah, how do you know if it's a good, like, what's a good job offer? Yeah, look like, and what are things you should be looking for when that when that time comes? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll take this a step back, Clay. Like, I think if you like a practice, that, let's say like now you know that you want to live in that city, you look up which practices and which hospitals are there or what for, you decide academic versus community. But I would highly recommend making that decision about where you wanna live um, or, or what sort of uh, setup you want to join. Then my recommendation is to do a locum there. If you get the luxury or the opportunity, especially during fellowship, this is the time you can make the connection with the future job that you like and try to get at least one week of locum, you will you will get an inter like understanding the internal scope and how things are. The, going for an interview and site visit is one thing, which is probably this is what most people do. But I found that people who have joined us and stayed with us and they're happy are those who knew what to expect. I guess the questions are definitely you can ask certain questions in the in the interview, but uh, trying things is different than um, than just you know getting. Uh, surprised with certain things that don't come up during the interview and everything is relevant as I said but it's very important to ask uh, you know is this practice a joint like a joint practice or fee for service are we sharing income or not uh, don't be shy and and I would say please don't be shy to ask about the money some sometimes Yes, you don't ask, this is not the first question that should come out of your mouth when you, when, you, when you get the opportunity to ask questions, but definitely ask to speak to the business manager of the group, ask about their annual income, how do they distribute it? Do they own a clinic or not? Because clinics uh, is a cost, correct? Um, uh, do you ask yourself, do you really like to work in clinics or not? Sometimes some people find it boring and it's, sometimes it's mostly uh, it could be mainly x-ray and ultrasound and BMDs. So ask all these type of details and make sure it fits your personality and uh, your needs. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you everybody for having me. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I included my email if you have any follow-up questions about this and how to join, uh, join us for an elective. If you're interested in future jobs, uh, I'm more than happy to speak to you one-on-one. -on -one. So just let me know. And best of luck to you guys. Thanks a lot for your time. You're welcome. Take care. I'm gonna try to stop the recording.